Now we need to look at the reaction of dehydration of alcohols. The product of dehydration will be an alkene. And in this case, before we look at the reaction, it's important to understand that the product of the reaction will depend on what kind of alcohol we have. The product will be an alkene, and the alkene can be a monosubstituted alkene. We need to describe what is the meaning of all of these different types of alkenes. This is the molecule of ethene. This is a simplest alkene when we have four hydrogens. We call the names of these alkenes as substitution of one hydrogen in each case. The first one is when we have removed one hydrogen, we have a monosubstituted alkene. I'm placing a methyl group in here, but it could be ethyl, propyl, doesn't matter how long is this part. I can call this just an R group, but that is a monosubstituted alkene because I still have three hydrogens. This is a disubstituted alkene, and this is a geminal substituted alkene because the two hydrogens were removed from the same carbon. I still have these two hydrogens here. So this is a disubstituted alkene that is a geminal alkene. This is a terminal carbon-carbon double bond. And then we have a disubstituted alkene that we know as cis when the two hydrogens are on the same side and a that substituted alkene but trans because I have the hydrogens on opposite side. We see the two groups on opposite side. This one is propene. This one is 1, 2, 2 methyl propene. And this one is a cis 2 butene. This one is a trans 2 butene. Now we have this one that is a tri-substituted alkene, which means that I only have one hydrogen from a thin is left. So I have three different alkyl groups bonded to the carbon-carbon double bond. I can have three different R groups. Not necessarily I need to have the same number of carbons. There could be two carbons along here. This one could be a different size of carbon, but this is a tri-substituted alkene because I still have one hydrogen left. This one is a tetra-substituted alkene because I have no hydrogens bonded to the carbon-carbon double bond from the beginning substance. From a thin, I do not have any hydrogens. A tetra-substituted alkene, it can have different size of R groups they not necessarily need to be the same size. The reaction of dehydration will require the use of a strong catalyst as sulfuric acid. This reaction also, the rate of the reaction will depend on the kind of alcohol that we have. If the reaction is with the primary alcohol, it will require a very high temperature. If it is a secondary alcohol, the temperature will be lower, and if it is a tertiary alcohol, just the catalyst sulfuric acid will be enough to form a carbon-carbon double bond. In our first case, we see elimination of an OH and a hydrogen from an adjacent carbon to produce the molecule of propene. In our second case, this is a secondary alcohol, cyclohexanol. We see two neighboring hydrogens that can be eliminated, but when we look at the product, it will be the same. If I remove this OH and this hydrogen, I'm forming this carbon-carbon double bond, and if I remove this OH and this hydrogen, it's forming the double bond here. But when we name the substance, it's going to be the same product. Dehydration of asymmetric alcohols can produce more than one product. In this case, we will always lose the OH from the alcohol and one hydrogen from one of the neighboring carbons. In the first case, we are keeping the hydrogen from the primary carbon and we are losing the hydrogen from a secondary carbon, forming a carbon-carbon double bond between carbon number 2 and 3. In the second case, we are losing 
the hydrogen from a primary carbon forming a carbon-carbon double bond between carbon number one and two. If we observe on the first case, this one is a di-substituted alkene. This is a cis and a trans 2-butene. Both products will form. On the second case, this is a 1-butene. The major product will be the most substituted alkene, which means the product is the one that the carbon-carbon double bond is bonded to more alkyl groups. This is a terminal alkene, which has only one R group attached to the carbon-carbon double bond. On the second example, this one is a secondary alcohol, and the product could be a trisubstituted alkene and a disubstituted alkene. Considering this carbon and this carbon, this is a disubstituted alkene. This is another example of dehydration of an alcohol that can produce more than one compound. This is a tertiary alcohol because the carbon that is bonded to the OH is bonded to three carbons. We see one, two, three carbons. This is the molecule of 2,2-dimethyl, two, 2-butanol. Two it is butanol because the longest hydrocarbon chain is four carbons long and it has two methyls, so we can use the multiplier to 3-dimethyl. On carbon number two, we have a hydroxyl group. If we remove a hydrogen from a primary carbon, we will make a terminal alkene. If we remove a hydrogen from a tertiary carbon, then we're going to make a tetra-substituted alkene. And I want to show that step by step. In the first case, we are removing a hydrogen from a tertiary carbon. We are removing also the OH. So by removal of OH and hydrogen, we're making double bond here to produce a tetra-substituted alkene. When the removal of the hydrogen is from the primary carbon and the OH, of course, we are forming the double bond between the primary, what was the primary carbon and the carbon that was bonded to the OH to make a disubstituted alkene. This is a geminal disubstituted alkene because it has two hydrogens left. The major product is the tetra-substituted alkene. This last example is an alcohol that is a tertiary alcohol but it has three different kinds of hydrogens that can be lost as a molecule of water. On the first case is when we are losing a hydrogen from a tertiary carbon, we are producing a tetra-substituted alkene. That means that this carbon-carbon double bond is bonded to four carbons. On the second case is when we are losing a hydrogen from a secondary carbon. The double bond is formed right here and we are forming a tri-substituted alkene, that is, a carbon-carbon double bond that is bonded to three carbons. On the last case is when the hydrogen is lost from a primary carbon, so we are losing the OH in all cases and one hydrogen in different cases. So in this one we have a di-substituted alkene, and this is a Gemino, disubstituted alkene, and will be the minor product. So this is the major product, the one that has more carbons bonded to the carbon-carbon double bond.